What is up, Smite fans? It's Wraithan, and I am back with another Top 5 Mistakes video to help you guys get a little bit better at Conquest. Sorry for the delay in getting these out. I've been sick. I don't know if you can hear it, and I was in Denver for the whole last week of January. This time, we're going to be taking a look at the support role and some common problems people have when playing the role. As always, be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I'm also available almost every single night for live Q&A over on my Twitch channel. All right. Let's get to it with number five, knowing your role. In team fights, there's really three appropriate roles for a support. Engage your setup, dive, or peel. Most new or learning players are really bad at understanding what their role needs to be relative to the team comp. It can actually end up costing the game even as early as picks and bans. So we're going to dive into these three here and help you guys out. Engage or setup is exactly what it sounds like. You're going to be the one starting the fight and setting up for your team's damage. Some good examples of this are Blink Geb Alts, Neja Alts, Jing Chen Alts, Athena Taunts, and more. You are there to start the fight, burn beads, and set up for your team's damage. Similar to my jungle video, you are the go button. From this initial engage, you can actually then choose to either dive and chase their backline or return to your carries to peel. A dive character is one that goes all in and typically aims straight for the backline. Your role is to get to the carries not let up until they're dead or out of the fight. And typically you're going to see this on highly aggressive assassin supports, junglers, and warrior soul laners. Selecting or playing a dive character only really works if your carries have a ton of mobility, self-peel, or if you have another member of your team looking out for them. Peel is also exactly what it sounds like. The enemy is attached to your carries and it's your job to get them off. Good examples of gods that do well peeling for your team are Kepri, Geb, Ardio, Ganesha, Kumba, Terra, Yamoja, and anyone else that does an awesome job of pulling enemy players away from your teammates. Now that you know the three team fight roles, it's important to be thinking of these from the very start of the game when you're picking your character. Ask yourself, do my carries have mobility? Do they need setup for their damage? Is my solo laner planning to dive? Does the enemy team have a lot of dive and will I need to peel? It's critically important that you think about the team composition early and understand where you need to be in these late game team fights. All right, that's it for Know Your Role. On to number four, Kill Greed. It kind of plays off of uh, some of my earlier episodes and the tunnel vision point that I made earlier, but supports are generally so guilty of this, I want to call it out individually. Unless you are the dive character for your team, Sir Cat, someone like that, do not ever chase down kills while the enemy still has a threat to your backline. Let it go. Keep an eye on your carries and be ready to defend. It is better to let the kill go, especially if they don't pose a major threat to your team anymore. The only exception I can think of here is a mage with big damage teamfight ultimates that are still up. If you get a Kakulkin really low, he hasn't ulted yet, and he could still turn around and you know end the fight with one ability, then you can chase after him and try and get the kill. But for the most part, make sure your team stays alive. Okay, on to number three, knowing when to rotate. There's two sections here, laning and mid-game. Let's start off with the laning. With the advent of Season 7, this one is more important than ever. During Season 6, the dual lane was kind of a throwaway, and supports were pretty much free to rotate whenever they wanted. They even started at the enemy jungler speed buff sometimes. It was obnoxious. Uh, with Season 7, this has all changed really quickly. The camp spawn timers, extra harpies on the dual lane side. It means the supports actually could stick with their carries for a significantly longer portion of the game. Whereas before, you'd rotate pretty much right after you finished your boots or around the 6-minute mark. It is crucial for the first 10 to 12 minutes of the game that you and your carry are at a minimum securing your Chad Harpy and Purple Buff to prevent the enemy dual lane snowball. If you leave too early, they get all of that XP uncontested and free and could lead to a very snowballed ADC and support if you're not careful. As for the mid-game, this is actually where a lot of supports fall down. Rotating in the mid-game is more art than science, and it really comes down to a series of judgment calls. The first being, can I make it to this fight? A lot of times, supports desperately want to try and help their teammates and end up wasting time by rotating to a fight that's obviously going to go one way. You'll have to feel this one out, but ask yourself, if I make it there, will I have an impact? If I'm late, am I just going to die myself? Is it even a big deal if my teammate dies? Is there a major objective up on that side of the map we'll need to contest after our teammate dies? And then finally, the big question, is there something else we can do or another objective we can take instead of helping? Uncertainty to these questions and over-rotating by the supports tend to be the number one cause for support players falling behind, which will ruin your games real fast. 
So try to work on this one. And for the love of God, please stop trying to solo jungle camps by yourself. All right, on to number two, knowing what relics to use. There's no easy way to break this down. As it's entirely situational. So we're going to go through a few of them, starting with your first relic and how it'll impact your play. What does this relic say about the way that you're going to play your lane or the early game? First one up is Meditation. This is mostly used for in-lane sustain and preventing executes. A little extra health and mana can go a long way during late-game teamfights as well, but it also means that you have no idea what anti-heal is or how often it's bought. Next up, we've got Shell. Shell is the go-to first relic in support. The health shield can't be anti-healed, and it's a great way to provide security for your carries when your abilities are down. I would say 99% of the time these days, I'll get a Shell first relic. Frenzy. Frenzy is okay early and mostly used if you want to press an early lead that you think you're going to have and you want to try and burn down objectives quickly before you hit level 12. Not great in the first relic slot, in my opinion, especially since you're mostly laning for the first 12 minutes these days anyway. You know, it's really a judgment call here. You can pick it up, but I would only do it if you feel like you're really going to have a solid early advantage and early pressure. Last up is Heavenly or Sprint. It's known by a million different names depending on how long you've played. Uh, Sprint is a super situational relic and is mainly used for hard disengaging from teamfights or getting out of trouble in lane. It is mostly useful when the enemy team have a ton of slows or big teamfight abilities that are most impactful when you stand in them for the full duration. Think like a Cupid ult or a Ho Yi ult. Having a Sprint allows you to get out of those abilities before the full damage or the stun goes off and can be extremely helpful. This is also useful if the enemy jungler utilizes a heavy slow to complete their gank. Think Kamazots 2, Bastet 3, Thana 1 completely counters their ability to chase you down and allows you to juke out abilities much easier. Uh, honorable mention here on these relics, you can go blink first relic if you really want to fight a lot early game, but I wouldn't do it unless you have massive... All right, on to the second relic slot. These are going to be even more situational than the first relic slot, and it's going to completely depend on how you want to play out the rest of the match. Uh, you can pick up any of the ones I've mentioned already for the same reasons, uh, but this is really going to dictate how you're going to play the rest of the game after level 12. All right, let's run through them real quick. Frenzy. Frenzy in the second relic slot is extremely useful, especially if you can purchase an early upgraded one for the pen. Frenzy means you'll be playing an objective-focused mid to late game with lots of Furies and Fire Giants. Great for aggressive team fights. I like this relic a whole heck of a lot, and it's on a really short cooldown if you get something like a Relic Dagger. Blink. I mentioned this before. Buy Blink if you're wanting to engage on the enemy team. Remember, we talked about engage earlier. Buy this if you have a great setup ability or ult, and you're in the perfect lockstep with your damage dealers. If you Blink engage, and there is no follow-up because they're not expecting you to go in, you are a dead man, and your team's abilities are wasted. It is important that you communicate with your engages on the Blink Relic, and make sure everybody's on the same page. Ankh. Cursed Ankh is simple. Buy it if they have a lot of healing and it's a problem in your team fights. If you've got the anti-healing already and your carries and your jungler and the healing is still a problem in these fights, get the Ankh. It'll change everything. I think this is actually one of the more under-purchased ones. Phantom. Get this if Odin or Yamoja are giving you trouble. That's really the only reason to buy it. Simple. Congratulations. You made it to the end to our final major mistake. Trying to save the dumb motherfuckers on your team. Every support is guilty of this, myself included. We all want to be good supports. We want our teammates to give us a nod at the end of the game or a team fight and credit us with the win. And oftentimes this results in players going above and beyond for the get down Mr. President plays when the reality of it is their teammate is probably grossly out of position and needed saving because of it. Try to resist the urge to sacrifice yourself for dummies. If your solo laner is proxying without protections or an ultimate, it is not your job to go save him. Actually, if the enemy team over-rotates over to kill him, it is your job to shift your team's attention to the Gold Fury. Only go for the save if you are confident you can get your teammate out by sacrificing your life. They also kind of have to be worth it. So if it's your ADC who's gotten soloed five times and he's out of position because he was pushing a T2 and he's four levels down, yeah, definitely not. Oh my god, what's this? A bonus tip? <laughs> this is for all you solo support players out there. Stop. And I mean stop going for solo late game fire giant steals 1v5 against the team with secure. You're not going to be up by the time that they siege. Your team is going to be down 4v5 with their best setup character dead in the fountain. Cut it out. I see so many players do this because they want to end up in stream highlights or... You know, I'm the greatest because they stole the Fire Giant, and then they turn and they look. They're down for 70 seconds. Their team has to defend a Phoenix, and they lose the game. 
Cut it out. I've seen more games thrown because somebody wants to be a hero and Incon, Athena, Reach, Steal the Fire Giant that they end up just dying themselves. If you can't secure the objective, the enemy team isn't low. It's late in the game, so the timers are long. Don't go up there by yourself. You're just going to die and cost the game. Stop it. Well, that's it for me, guys. As always, please subscribe if you haven't already and click the little bell if you want notifications for more awesome tips and tricks like this. I think I'm going to do one on sieging next. I hope you guys like this one. Uh, I think support's one of those roles that everybody needs to work on, and these are some just high-level things that I notice when I play with other people. Let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree. Remember to smash that like button, and I'll see you guys on the next one.